The Siberian Husky is a specialized breed of dog bred by the Chukchi of the northeastern part of Siberia and registered by American dog handlers in the 1930s as a sled dog, obtained from the aboriginal dogs of the far east of Russia, mainly from Anadar, Kalima, Kamchatka from local sedentary coastal tribes Yukagurs, Kareks, Asian Eskimos and Primary Chukchi Ankalans. This aboriginal sled dog of the Far East is one of the oldest dog breeds. Currently, the developed breed Siberian Husky is used not only as a sled dog, but also as a companion dog and a show dog. History of the breed. Dogs of the Russian Far East. Since the Neolithic, sled dogs of the Russian Far East were bred by indigenous sedentary peoples who were engaged in fishing and hunting for sea animals and belonged to the so-called Akats culture. The descendants of these peoples Nivks, Yukagurs Chuvans, Kareks, partly Asian Eskimos, have preserved the tradition of breeding sleds. It is no coincidence that neighboring peoples called these areas the land of dogs. Having a sufficient amount of food dried fish, they were able to feed a large number of dogs necessary for a good team, which required at least nine dogs. The development of sled dog breeding was stimulated in the 17th-18th centuries by the Russians, who were actively exploring these areas in search of soft gold, they needed transport for the delivery of goods, mail, and for the driving of officials. A new type of larger and more capacious sled appeared and spread, the so-called East Siberian Russian. And, accordingly, it took more dogs to transport it. The Russians willingly hired local mushers and actively trained themselves. When, in 1920, Amundsen visited the Russian old-timers of Kalima, he enthusiastically wrote. In riding dogs, these Russians and Chukchi stand above everyone I have ever seen. When the gold rush began in Alaska, the demand for sled dogs rose sharply among the inhabitants of North America. And since they had mastered the Russian Far East quite well, American poachers were actively engaged in whaling and seal hunting in the regions of Chukotka, Kamchatka and the Sea of Okhotsk, the dogs were taken from these places. Relocation to the USA. Sled dogs of the Russian Far East were first introduced to Alaska in 1908. Because they had excellent racing qualities, they continued to be brought to the United States over the next two decades for racing and further breeding. In the USSR, when the General Register of Northern Breeds was compiled, the sled dogs of the Siberian North, Far East, sacked in 1934, the Siberian Husky breed was officially recognized in the United States, and the standard was set for it. History has preserved for us the names of people who stood at the origins of the creation of this factory breed. These are the fur trader from the Russian Empire William Husak, participated in the Alaskan races in 1909, the Scottish gold miner Falk Mole Ramsey, in 1911, the fur trader Olaf Swenson, who seriously studied the Chukchi practice of keeping and breeding these dogs in the late 1930s. And of course the musher Leonard Sapala. The story of Leonard Sapala's team and the delivery of the vaccine to Nome. The Norwegian Leonard Sapala arrived in Alaska in 1901, and since 1915, he has won numerous races in various races with his dogs brought from Siberia. Sapala was voted the fastest driver and has consistently won races for several years in a row. He became a major figure in the Great Race of Mercy in the winter of 1925, when the diphtheria-ridden Alaskan city of Nome needed medicine from a nearby railroad station, which could only be done by dog sledding. Sapala with a team went through the most difficult part of the route, Norton Bay, and his leader, the Siberian Husky Togo, distinguished himself most of all, providing invaluable assistance to Leonard and subsequently left numerous high-quality offspring. In January 1925, from the Alaskan city of Nome, practically isolated from the outside world, a message was transmitted by telegraph. Nome is calling Nome is calling we have an outbreak of diphtheria, we have no serum we urgently need help, Nome is calling, an arctic storm that was raging over Nome prevented airplanes from Seattle, where there was a supply of serum, from delivering the medicine by air. The shipment was sent from Anchorage by train to Nanana, where the railway line ended, only dog sleds could go further, on the way from Anchorage to Nome, called the Iditarod Trail. The equipped expedition relay race for the fastest delivery of the serum consisted of 20 drivers and about 150 dogs, they had to pass a section of the route from Nanana to Nome, with a length of 1,085 kilometers. Leonard left Nome with the intention of receiving the serum in Nulato. Near the village of Shaktalik, about 300 kilometers from Nome, he saw a musher carrying a consignment along that section of the route. They almost missed each other in a blizzard, but Sapala managed to stop the team, received the medicine and, turning the dogs around, set off on the way back. The temperature was 30 degrees below zero, in an effort to save precious time, Leonard took a risk by taking a shortcut across the ice of Norton Bay. The team went 80 kilometers at night, in a violent storm, the ice cracked under the sledges and the paws of the dogs, there was a danger that the team would fall through, or the ice flow would come off and go into the sea. It almost happened. After the ice broke around them, they circled in the open sea for several hours, and when the ice flow finally nailed to the whole ice, Sapala and Togo moved with the lines through one and a half meters of water in order to draw the rest of the dogs closer. 
The harness slipped into the water, then Togo jumped after it and pulled the line in the water to the musher, until the ice flow came close enough for the dogs from the harness to move onto strong ice. That, in addition to his courage and endurance, had the ability to find a way, anticipating danger. He made tired and frozen dogs work, chose the right direction in the dark, warned the musher about openings and cracks. On the north coast, Leonard stopped the sleds near the igloo, where he had spent the previous night, took the dogs into the hut, fed them and took the serum in the warmth, hoping that in a couple of hours the storm would subside. In the early morning the temperature was still 30 degrees below zero, the storm continued to rage, and Leonard had to continue the transition in these conditions. When they reached Gullivan, the dogs fell exhausted. That one could no longer run his legs were taken away from him. At the time of the race he was 10 years old. But the serum was only 125 kilometers from Nome. In total, Sapala's team covered a distance of 418 kilometers almost without interruption. The last leg of the journey was carried by a fresh team of Gunnar Kassen, whose leader was then a young dog Balto, he also managed to stay on the road in the worst blizzard. This team brought the medicine to Nome. The serum was frozen, but not damaged, and it was immediately used. Five days later, the epidemic was completely stopped. The media glorified those who brought the serum to Nome. Balto has become a real star. The 30-minute documentary Balto's race to Nome was shot in Hollywood. But the fame soon faded, the merits were forgotten, and the team was sold to an unknown music producer. In 1927, a Cleveland businessman discovered dogs in Los Angeles on display, unkempt and half-sick. At his call, the residents of Cleveland raised $2,000 for the ransom of the team, and the dogs arrived at the Cleveland Zoo, where they subsequently lived. Dog sleds were the main means of transportation in the North, and this race was the most heavily publicized event in dog riding, before the world switched to snowmobiling. But until now, in long journeys, sleds are very often used as a means, certainly superior to snowmobiles in terms of reliability. And the revival of the sport of dog sled racing began in the 1970s and has only been gaining momentum since then. Breed name. The term husky, a distorted esky, originally meant the Eskimos. Subsequently, this name was assigned to the Eskimo husky. These are dogs with thick hair, a sharp muzzle with erect ears and a straight tail. When the first representatives of the Chukchi dogs arrived in North America to distinguish them from the Eskimo Huskies, they began to be called Siberian Huskies, and this name has been preserved for them to this day. Further improvement in racing performance. Sled sports did not stand still, and the speed of the Siberian Huskies was no longer enough for the athletes. They began to look for a way to create a breed that, while maintaining the dignity of the Siberian Husky, would show a much greater speed. This way became a cross-breeding mixing the blood of the best individuals of aboriginal sled breeds, cops and hounds of dogs and Siberian Huskies. The resulting dogs turned out to be suitable only for use in sledding sports, but they surpassed the Siberian Huskies in racing characteristics. Today they are classified as a separate breed the Alaskan Husky, not to be confused with the Alaskan Malamute, but this breed does not have a standard and is not recognized by the ICF because it is a mestizo group, which is why dogs are extremely diverse. However, athletes do not want official recognition of the Alaskan Husky because this will be followed by the inevitable appearance of an exhibition breeding line, which will negatively affect the racing qualities of the dogs. Nowadays, all the winners of the Alaskan races ride in sleds made of Alaskan Huskies, every successful athlete has his own recipe for creating the best dogs and keeps it secret. Purebred Siberian Huskies still participate in races, but they are much outperformed by mestizos. So, for example, in 2010, at the Alaskan Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race, the best team of Siberian Huskies came 42nd, out of 55, musher Blake Fracking, setting a race record for purebred dogs, time. 11 days 20 hours 39 minutes 11 seconds, leaders time. 8 days 23 hours 59 minutes 9 seconds. Spreading around the world and returning to Russia. The intelligence and endurance of the sled dog were not in demand when E. Seeley and Lorna B. Demidoff bred a blue-eyed, bright black and white dog, thereby impressing the judges and winning prizes for the best in their group and the best dog at the show. Thus, the Siberian Husky breed moved away from its origins and received a new direction of development as a participant in beauty competitions. Already 14 dogs participated in the breed show in 1997. In 2000, the RKF registered 139 husky puppies. Dogs of this breed are very friendly, they are excellent companions in games for children, they are very mobile and tireless. Therefore, they continue to gain popularity. But the future owners of the Siberian Husky of exhibition breeding should remember that this is still a dog that has not gone very far from the working ancestors, and although it does not require huge loads, it is not worth making a sofa dog out of a Siberian. He needs a fairly long walk and jogging with the owner. Chukaka sled dogs remaining in Russia.
Aboriginal sled dogs are still bred and exploited in some villages and settlements of Chukaka, and are even singled out as a separate breed, Chukaka sled dog. This breed has already been recognized by the RKF, but has not yet received FCI recognition. The culture of breeding and using sled dogs in Chukaka has survived only in a few settlements along the coastal strip. Thus, both the Siberian Husky and the Chukchi sled dog with equal right can be called the descendants of the Chukchi sled dogs of the early 20th century. The differences between the breeds are due to the fact that in the United States, breeders were focused more on preserving the exterior of dogs to the detriment of their working qualities and in Russia on maintaining working qualities at the expense of the exterior. Unlike Siberian Huskies, the Chukaka sled dog today belongs to rare breeds and is little known outside Chukaka. Layering within the Siberian Husky breed. Representatives of the Siberian Husky breed can be conditionally divided into three groups workers, racing and exhibition, show. The rarest are workers. This is where Haska breeding all over the world started. Workhorses, the dog version. Carrying not very large cargo over long distances, rather quickly. Smart, unpretentious. Not sparkling with beauty, not very fast, but amazingly hardy. These are dogs, which since ancient times carried mail, firewood, meat. Huskies are no longer used as working animals. The North has its own aboriginal dogs, and they are exploited. The closest to working use are hiking and dog riding. These dogs work day after day throughout the season. Racing huskies are dogs for sports. The speeds that they develop are much higher than the speeds typical of horses. These dogs are specific in conformation, very motorized. There is a widespread belief about racers that they are uncontrollable, disobedient this is just a myth. Such dogs live quietly in the city and are shown. Racers are also divided into subgroups depending on their activity for example, for skydiving, teams of two four dogs, huskies with a height of 60 cm and above are preferred. These are large, large-footed dogs, capable of running quickly in a small group and at the same time dragging the owner behind them. Racers running in sixes and larger sleds are more moderate in height. In general, racing dogs differ from kennel to kennel. Each kennel has its own type of racers, depending on the preferences of the owner. A common feature of all racing huskies is the short fur. Show huskies are dogs whose job is to show them in the ring. A successful show dog is a talented actor. Show dogs are very different in appearance, much depends on the kennel. But it is possible to divide the show huskies into two large subgroups American and European. American handling is heavier, more powerful, and usually high tued this is a feature of American handling and its influence on the development of the breed. European dogs are lighter and more graceful. A common feature of all show huskies is a shortened muzzle, which gives the dog a prettier appearance, but worsens the heating of the inhaled frosty air. The official breed standard today still describes a working dog, not a racing or show dog. Formally, both are deviations from the standard. However, in real life, the assessment in the ring is made according to the criteria and preferences of a particular expert, and the main assessment it traces is time, and experts do not always look at the exact compliance of the dog with the standard. The closest to the official standard can be considered the British Siberian Huskies. Breed Standard. General Form. The general appearance of a dog of the Siberian Husky breed is, first of all, the appearance of lightness and speed. It is a medium-sized dog with a compact build. When viewed from the side, the length of the body from the humeral scapular joint to the buttock is slightly greater than the height of the dog at the withers. The coat is quite dense, with a well-developed undercoat. The ears are erect, the tail is feather-shaped. The dog works great in a team, easily transports light loads. Hardy animals, males outwardly differ from females in a more powerful skeleton and body proportions. Females have a more fragile and refined skeleton, but they cannot be called weak. Dogs of this breed are not overweight if properly fed. Head. A rough head is a disadvantage of this breed, as well as a too light and refined head. The distance from the end of the nose to the beginning of the skull should be equal to the distance from the beginning of the muzzle to the back of the head. The width of the muzzle is medium, the lips are pigmented and should not be loose. The ears are medium in size, triangular in shape, not too far apart and set high on the head. Thick, well pubescent, without bending forward, only firmly erect, with slightly rounded tips pointing straight up. The eyes should be almond-shaped, moderately wide apart, slightly oblique. Eye color can be from brown to blue, heterochromia, differences in the color of the ear eyes is, is also possible. Disadvantages are too close or far set eyes. Neck and chest. The neck is raised when the dog is standing, of medium length, sufficiently arched and raised. If the animal is trotting, the neck is extended so that the head is sufficiently extended forward. The disadvantages are the neck is too massive, long or short. The standard shoulder should have an oblique shoulder blade that is located at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. The shoulder should not be perpendicular to the ground. The disadvantage is a straight and too loose, so-called loose shoulder. The husky's chest is deep and powerful, although not very wide. The ribs extend from the spine to the sides, but do not interfere with free movement. 
Breast that is too wide or barrel-shaped is a fault in the breed. Front and hind limbs. The forelimbs of Siberian huskies look moderately wide apart, always parallel and straight, the elbows should fit snugly to the body, the pasterns should be slightly sloping. The length of the leg from the elbow to the toes is greater than the distance from the elbow to the withers of the animal. Elbows set too wide are disadvantages. The hindquarters are also parallel and moderately wide apart. Strong thighs, well-angulated hock. When moving, the paws of the dog remain straight and do not turn out either inward or outward. The disadvantages are loose paws, too large, or, conversely, small and fragile. Toes facing inward are also considered a fault in the breed. The paw pads are well adapted to the snow, periodic cleaning of the paw from ice accumulating in the gaps between the toes is not required. However, with active movement on a hard crust, the paws are injured. To protect against this, many mushers use special shoes that are worn on the paws of dogs. There are dew claws on the front legs. These fingers are not rudimentary, they are necessary for the dog to scratch the face. However, some mushers perform surgery on their dogs to remove dew claws to eliminate the risk of injury to the paws when putting on shoes. Tail. The tail of the animal is well pubescent, resembles the tail of a fox, set below the top line, in a calm state it is straightened and lowered, in alert state it is raised above the back with a beautiful sickle. The tail does not curl to the side and does not lie on the back. The hair on the tail is of medium length, evenly distributed. Disadvantages. Kinky tail, tightly curled tail, overly pubescent tail, tail set too low or too high. Color. According to the standard, the color of the Siberian husky can be almost any. From black to white, with markings and stripes all over the body. The most popular are black and white and gray and white. Less common are brown, white and fawn, pibbled, spotted color. Pure black, brown, no white, and pure white colors are extremely rare, but not disqualifying. Typical, although not required, is a mask around the eyes, black or white, and a double vertical stripe on the forehead at the base of the nose. Coat. The Siberian Husky's coat is not long, but thick enough, giving the impression of a well-dressed animal, very warm, allowing the dog to sleep easily on the snow and 25-degree frost without the risk of freezing. The undercoat is very soft and dense, perfectly holding the on, which lies smoothly, does not bristle. During the shedding period, the dog does not have undercoat, in order to give the animal a more accurate shape, it is trimmed on the sides and between the toes. In other areas, trimming is not allowed, and in case of violation, the dog will be removed from the competition. The disadvantage of the coat is long, coarse, too soft or harsh coat. Movement. For dogs of this breed, and even in light gait is characteristic. The dog is very fast and light. When looking at the animal from the front, the tracks do not form a single line. The disadvantages are awkward movement, movement with a short step, crossing of limbs, skidding of the back of the body when running. The faster the husky runs, the easier and more free it seems, it seems that the animal is flying over the surface of the earth. Dimensions and weight. The sizes of males and females are not too different. The height at the withers of males from 53.5 to 60 cm, females from 50.5 to 56 cm. The weight of the animal should be proportional to its height, various size limits allow a fairly large spread in numbers, but males are rarely heavier than 28 kg, and females 23 kg. Animals that are too tall, outside the breed standard, are disqualified and not allowed for breeding. Summary. The most important characteristics of the breed are medium size, strong bones, harmonious constitution, light and free movement, thick coat, pleasant head and ears shape, fox tail and soft character. The dog is adapted to great physical activity, so it has long been used as a sled dog. Character. Friendly and calm, but alive at the same time. The dog is categorically unsuitable for use as a hunting dog, hunts, but does not bring prey, watchdog, the instinct of protecting the territory is minimized, and security, normally these dogs have absolutely no aggression towards humans. The dog is too independent, therefore it is ill-suited for the role of a service dog. Attempts to unblock aggression against a person, as a rule, end up with a dog with a disturbed psyche, which, given the physical capabilities of this dog, poses a danger to others. This breed cannot be used as a guard breed. The Siberian Husky easily settles in a new place and is well suited for apartment maintenance. Has excellent mental abilities, which require almost no additional development, but frequent games and activities are recommended. Recently, this breed has become very popular due to its unusual appearance. However, Huskies require great physical activity, long walks and regular exercises for the mind, obedience classes, frisbee, agility, hiking in new places for the dog, Siberian Huskies tend to run away. There is a known case when a dog closed in a rural house with its muzzle knocked out the glass in a jump, jumped out the window, and went to look for the rest of its pack. In addition, they quickly learn to open doors, they are excellent diggers, jump well, and are able to climb even over a high fence, which makes it difficult to keep them within a fenced area. Care. The dog is very clean, not drooling, the coat and skin are odorless. 
Molting takes place twice a year in a natural way, without cutting. The animal does not require special care, during molting, the undercoat, rather thick, is combed out, which facilitates the process. Dogs of this breed need constant physical activity. Siberian Husky. Price and how to buy correctly. It is necessary to purchase a Siberian Husky puppy exclusively from trusted breeders in a specialized nursery. It is recommended to buy a baby of two months of age. It is imperative to pay attention to its activity, optimal fatness, cleanliness of the coat, sociability and quick wits. When buying, they study the pedigree, a variety of health certificates, the characteristics of the puppy's parents. In such cases, consultations with knowledgeable specialists who can assist in making the right choice are not uncommon. In kennels, you can establish communication with puppies, track their abilities and behavior, compare different babies in character and intelligence, in general, make a choice in favor of the four-legged, one that most resembles and likes. Here you can get valuable advice on the diet, care, training of dogs. A puppy bought in a kennel has all the necessary documentation, a veterinary passport, which indicates the dates of vaccinations and procedures for duerming. Every husky raised on the territory of the nursery has a brand that can be located on the inside of the ear or in the abdomen. If we talk about the cost of a puppy, then it varies considerably, it all depends on the class to which the husky belongs. The most expensive are show class dogs, which have a high quality pedigree and were born to win numerous shows. The minimum cost of such a puppy is 1000 US dollars. To acquire just a friend and a reliable companion, it is not necessary to spend huge sums, you can buy a pet class puppy, which will cost an amount ranging from 300 to 400 US dollars. Most likely, such a pet will not have a pedigree. Huskies belonging to the breed class are already estimated at 600 US dollars, they are capable of breeding. The main thing is to decide on the purpose of establishing a dog, and then it will be easier to make a choice in favor of one or another dog class.